The mean value theorem states, if f is continuous on the closed interval, a, b, and differentiable on the open interval, a, b, then there exists a number c in the interval a, b, such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So what does this even mean? Let me show you a visual. So first we have some interval a, b. Let's draw that. So in between the x values a and b, there is some function f. Let's call this function right here. Here is my function f. As you can see, f, the f that I've drawn, is continuous on the closed interval from a to b. As you can see, there's no holes, jumps, or vertical asymptotes, and it's also differentiable. It's nice and smooth, there's no sharp turns. That means as long as those conditions are met, that means that there exists a number c somewhere between a and b. There is some number c such that f prime of c which is the slope of the tangent line at C, is equal to the slope of the secant line between A and B. So again, on the graph, that will mean that if I draw in the secant line, which is the line connecting these two points here. So what I've drawn right there, and if I find the slope between those two points, that would give me that, the slope of the secant line. So somewhere then between a and b, there exists some c value such that if I draw in right here the slope of the tangent line, those two will be equal to each other. So let's take a look at an example. Given f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 5, find the value c that is guaranteed by the mean value theorem on the interval 1 to 5. So looking at f of x, this is a quadratic function. It's nice and smooth and continuous. Therefore, these two conditions are met. You need to make sure in the mean value theorem that you do that first. The theorem only works if those two conditions are met. So yes, this f function is continuous on the interval 1 to 5 and also differentiable on the open interval 1, 5. So that means there must exist a number c between 1 and 5 such that this is true. So I'm going to start on the left side. That's finding f prime of c. That's the slope of the tangent line or the derivative in calculus. So we first want to find, I'm going to find f prime of x. That would be finding the derivative of this f of x function, which would be 2x minus 4. Well, just substituting in c, you can see that f prime of c is going to be equal to 2c minus 4. All I did was plug in c instead of x. Now I'm going to find the slope of the secant line, and that would be the slope between these two points here. So I will find f of 5 minus f of 1, all divided by 5 minus 1. So you can see here, if I found f of 5, that would be 25 minus 20, which is 5 plus 5. All right, I've got 10 minus f of 1, plugging in 1 here, I would have 1 minus 4, which is negative 3, plus 5, which is 2. All over 4, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So let's take a look at what I just found on this graph over here of the function f of x. So in green, I found the slope of the secant line, which is the slope of the line connecting these two points here. And I got an answer of two. And you can see that as I rise two, I run one, rise two, run one. And you know what the line that I drew in? It's pretty accurate, I just drew it by hand. All right, so now if I set the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, equal to the slope of the secant line, I can find where that c value will occur. So if I set 2c minus 4 equal to 2, that gives me 2c equals 6, or c equals 3. Let's go to the graph and check that out. So at a c value of 3, which would be right here, if I drew in the tangent line there, let's do that right here, look at that they look parallel, and that is what the mean value theorem guarantees. So as long as this function, once again, is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, we are guaranteed that there is a number somewhere in this interval such that we found the c value of 3, 
where the slope of the tangent line at that c value will equal the slope of the secant line between those two points. And that's the mean value theorem. If you found this video useful, please make sure to click subscribe right now so that you are informed when new videos come out that can help you in your calculus classes.